Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the pursuit of wealth for an MJ sector review. Today is Tuesday, March 23rd. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing the Safe Banking Act, the MJ banking bill reintroduced in the Senate with a nearly a third of the chamber signing on. So we'll look at some news and events, and then we'll go over some charting for both the US and Canadian sectors. But before we do, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try and go through this a little quicker today. And we didn't really have a whole, whole lot to update in terms of the charts. So we'll go through this news fairly quickly here as well. You can check this out on your own time, but essentially it's being reintroduced into the Senate and this is a couple hours ago. And this comes about a week after the US House of Representatives voted for it. And we had 27 co-sponsors on Tuesday reintroduce the Safe Banking Act in the Senate. And the bill would provide safe harbor to financial institutions who work in state legal MJ companies while it remains federally illegal. So the House passed the same bill in 2020, but because it was majority owned by uh, Mitch McConnell and the Republicans, it was unfriendly toward that reform. And now that it's Democratic controlled, I think that it has a big, big chance of getting passed. Let me know in the comments below if you're excited. Let me know if you think it's going to get passed or not. I'd love to hear from you. So with the new Senate leadership now firmly in favor of MJ policy reform, we are optimistic that this is narrowly tailored, but absolutely necessary legislation will be allowed to progress through the hearing process. So you can check out this as well. There's a couple other companies that were uh, providing coverage on it, but essentially they made a good point here. They bring up the safety of the store employees. So no one, not only do they not have access to traditional banking and funding and things like that, no one working in a store or behind a register should have to worry about experiencing a traumatic robbery at any moment. Merkley said in a press release, that means we can't keep forcing legal MJ businesses to operate entirely in cash, a nonsensical rule that is open invitation to robbery and money laundering. So let's make 2021 the year that we get this bill signed into law. Absolutely. Let's make 2021 the year. Let me know in the comments below if you're excited. New York lawmakers overcome MJ legalization impasse and expect bill in the next day or so. So again, right on cue as we have been trending lower and we did see some strength in the MJ space today while the market was weak. Obviously we, we trended lower with the market, but would have expected a little bit more weakness today given the size of the pullback. And you can check out my market update video from earlier on today. A uh, little bit of calm before the storm. We have key daily and weekly supports coming up on the S&P 500 and the tech sector. Also keep an eye on the US dollar, the DXY chart the dollar index. We also saw that Maryland adult use MJ legalization efforts fail for this year. So a little fork in the road, but the safe and New York news should offset that. We also saw Colorado governor signs MJ social equity bill as the lawmakers there move to vote to increase the possession limit. We also saw that Zenibus provides an update on a special meeting for shareholders and arrangement with Hexocorp. So it was originally to be in person on Thursday, April 15, 2021. And it'll be moved to a virtual only meeting to be held on Thursday, May 13th, 2021. So speaking of Zenibus and Hexo, we'll look at the charts here. So Hexo had support at 660 on that inverse head and shoulders. And we got to that today. We got to 662. I actually had a buy order in for 661 and it didn't fill. And that's okay. I got some at 680. And I'll continue to average down, but we are seeing a little bit of weakness here after hours. We were up to about 690. I think on that safe news that came out because it lined up relatively well. But now we're back down again, sitting at 670, down four cents after hours. But this inverse head and shoulders, if confirmed, we could be targeting up around the 10 and $11 area, which is our recent highs. But we'll move through the MJ space. So on the bear list, we had RIV, NSP, ZENA, and SNDL. On the bull list, we had VLNS and high tide. Something going on here. Break into new highs. VLNS had a double top there at 239, so I'd be cautious. We could pull back and form a daily higher low around 210 or $2, but definitely something going on with high tide and VLNS. While everybody else is daily consolidation mode, we're still busting out and uh, get, we've got the daily bounce fully intact. We have resistance coming up on high tide though at 95 cents, and today we hit a high of 92, so I'd be cautious there as well. So, like I said, most names in daily downtrends and daily consolidation. So we're just looking for daily higher lows. APHA, same deal, daily higher lows on watch. CGC looking for a higher low compared to 2804. 
I took a position in SNDL today. We got as low as 116. We had the left side of the shoulder here at 110 and support down at 93. I entered on a flush of $1 there a couple weeks ago and I sold it about 20%, 30%. So I sold around the $1.30s. I believe it was, I think I even sold a little bit in the dollar forties and now I've been scaling back in looking for these daily higher lows. So I got a, I filled an order today, I think at 120, I think it was 121 or 122. And again, I'll look to add tomorrow on a potential 110 test or maybe even a $1 and a potential dollar flush. But again, just looking for these daily higher lows compared to 93 and then if we can break the recent highs at $1.75 confirm a daily uptrend that'll give us confidence that the weekly bottoms are set and that we can be looking up to recent highs. So Tilray still looking for its weekly higher lows daily consolidation still underway needs to hold 1823 OGI so daily consolidations got EMA 26 there so I'm focusing on Hexo and SNDL personally. And again, watching for this inverse head and shoulders to play out, need to have that follow through into tomorrow to keep that hope alive. But again, SPY and the overall broader market are going to have a lot to do with that. If we break above 850, that will confirm a daily uptrend and then the weekly higher lows are set. But we are losing the 10 week moving average at 712. The MACD is bearish, stochastic is bearish. so. We're going to want to see us close above 712 by the end of the week. Absolutely. We're topping out at the 100 weekly moving average as well. So that's been clear resistance. And it's possible that we may need to see further downside from here on the daily. We're losing the 50 day moving average. And we could be heading toward the 100 day moving average, which is down here by our daily support level at 558. The 100 day moving average sitting at 554. So just be on the lookout. It can always go lower than you think. Hexo here on the weekly chart, we're getting close to the weekly VWAP, which held the last test. So moving on to the US sector, again, not really a whole, whole lot to report here, but MJNA, KHRN, and BAM leading the decline. I'll likely look to add to some BAM and some KHRN tomorrow as well. I like KHRN with the prospects of Mexico legalizing and all that jazz. Ian Acreage and VREO led the bull list today. So taking a look at MSOS, getting absolutely smoked and monthly consolidation underway. And speaking of monthly consolidation, just need to point out that we haven't seen any monthly consolidation on TrueLeave since $8.10. And they just had their earnings come out. They beat on their earnings and had impressive earnings. But again, nothing goes straight up forever. And we're likely, we have a lot of positive catalysts in the future and upcoming. And I don't think that there's really gonna be significant downside unless we see the market like the S&P 500 start weekly consolidation, lose its weekly uptrend. If the tech sector confirms a weekly downtrend like I mentioned in my broader market video earlier today, then that could be the reason that we see monthly consolidation. But at this point, I can't really see any negative news specifically to MJ that's going to tank this unless, you know, obviously, Something about her, the CEO, uh, Kim Rivers' husband, about the RICO case, maybe that comes out. But uh, I mean, in terms of all US MSOs, like we haven't really consolidated on the monthly on all these US MSOs. A little bit more consolidation on GTII and Cura, CL, but truly basically just been a rocket ship. So it's looking like we may need some sort of market weakness, significant market weakness in the broader market but MSOS is possible weekly downtrend on, on watch as well. So it's very similar to QQQ, where we have the weekly bounce, a potential weekly bear flag, and a potential for a weekly downtrend. We need to hold 4080. I'll definitely be scaling in. I've entered a few times around these levels, and I'll enter again around $40 support. We also had previous weekly support here at 4033. So $40 support is going to be extremely important after that, we have EMA 12 down here around sitting at uh, 3718. So we're going to end it there. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth and make sure to check out my broader market video for some overall direction and ideas going into tomorrow. Thanks again for joining us on a 
video update for the MJ sector and best of luck going into the trading day tomorrow. Take care, everyone.